Yeah. Originally, we were going to talk about your piece, Financial Feudalism, and, and you kicked it off with a, a Frederick Bost, uh, Bostiat quote, excuse me. Uh, when plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in society, over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. And I think that informs uh, our conversation today with you know everything moving so fast. We're actually going to talk about your latest piece, which is called The Shaky Foundation. And so um, what we've seen is coronavirus is exposing a lot of the weaknesses, I would say, in our you know financial, political, and public health systems. Um, but before we get into that, I want to ask, why did you call it a shaky foundation? Uh, can you explain that and, and maybe introduce the, uh, the Jimi Hendrix quote that you used to kick it off? All right. So, yeah, castles made of sand fall into the sea eventually. I mean, that that's that that pretty much describes how I see um, our civilization uh, at this point, you know, and, and I do think and I've been saying this for a while, I think we need to rebuild um, the entire civilization in a lot of ways. But we can do that. Um, it's necessary to do that. And, and we should do that. And so I think, you know, there is an optimistic um, way to, to way to see all of this. But but the, but the bigger point is, look, a lot of the the shaky foundation that we're living in um, started way before I was even born. You know, in the early 70s, as you know, 1971, getting off the gold standard, that really kicked off financialization in earnest, right? So what I like to talk about is after World War II, obviously the United States became a global empire, but that but that empire was based on not a shaky foundation. It was it was based on being you know having the world's manufacturing base after everyone was bombed out, um, playing a part in winning the war and being un- relatively unscathed, um, and then all of the things that the United States already has, like it's blessed with um, naturally, and so that you know lasted for a few decades, let's say two and a half decades. Um, the U.S. was let's say an industrial empire. Empire, a military yeah. empire, but also an industrial empire. It was based on making things. It was based on a real, actual economy and actual economic strength. Starting in 1971, we just started taking the easy way out to empire, and I, I call it. This is the beginning of the financial empire, and that's what we live in now. We're, we're not. We're not an industrial empire anymore. Clearly, right? Like coronavirus is exposing that. For example, we uh, 90. We shipped 95 percent of our mask making capacity out of the United States. Can't even make masks that we need. You know, we're reliant on other countries to provide masks for us. That was would never have been the case um, after right after World War II. We're we're just a different country. So so what is a financial empire? A financial empire is one in, that's really basically controls the world or has controlled the world via the financial system itself, right? But via the fiat U.S. dollar and control of that financial system, which is based on the U.S. dollar. And this made us very, very lazy and very, very weak, because if all you have to do is run the financial system with this imaginary currency that you can create and use as a weapon at will, you don't you get into the you get to the point where you don't need to actually do anything right like a lot of people talk about the military bases and all this. But but all of that can go away very quickly. If the, if the dollar is not there, the dollar is what what actually underpins. People like to say, "Oh, well, the dollar is backed up by the military." I actually disagree with that. I think the military is backed up by the dollar and the financial system. If the dollar didn't have the position that it had, or it has, or we'll see how long it lasts, but if if it didn't have that, then the military wouldn't be able to function everywhere in the way that it does, right? With basically an unlimited budget. So that's where, you know, so that's what we created. So we created and and what that's done is it hollowed out the country because we we all got lazy, essentially. And elites just started saying, well, we don't need manufacturing. We, we just have the dollar. We have the financial system. We have finance, you know, financialization. So they ship jobs overseas, um, increasingly uh, making money just on scams, lever- using a lot of leverage and buying assets um, and, and, you know, buying back shares. I mean, you, you, you discuss, you know, on Real Vision, this sort of thing. It's a, it's a huge laundry list. But the point is, a financial empire that's based on something so shaky um, as a fiat currency that dominates um, is one that at some point will obviously collapse. But, but it's interesting that it's taken so long. And what that means is that there's so much more rot underneath that, than people can even imagine. And so if, if, you know, if people want to look back, I've been writing, you know, for, like I said, since on my website for since 2012, I've been writing about all of the different points of weakness for all that time. And there, and it's basically every industry. I mean, every we've hollowed out and put the most corrupt people in charge of virtually everything in the society. 